This is your place for everything you need to know about Lake Forest football, soccer, and more. Now it's time for your host of the Lake Forest College Sports Zone, Cam McGuire. What a time to be a Forester. It's that time of year again. Homecoming week. How are we doing, Forester fans? As always, Cam McGuire here, your host of Lake Forest College Sports Zone. Glad to bring you episode number six. As we said, homecoming week. The festivities have already kicked off, and they're going to carry into the weekend with special guests joining us on this week's episode. But before that, je- that guest comes in to join us, 12 years it had been for the Lake Forest College football team. And they had not recorded a shutout in 12 years, but this past Saturday, it was a 35-0 win on the road at Knox College. And earlier this week, we caught up with Coach Cat to talk about the shutout. Coach, first off, congratulations. Shutout last Saturday. The first shutout in 12 years, I had to feel pretty good. Yeah, you know, it was good. It's something our team had really been working towards for a long time. And, you know, I wouldn't say this is our best defense, but we probably played our best game as far as swarming to the football that we've probably done in the last 12 years. And I mean, I was here for that last shot. I was a defensive coordinator, and I remember what it took to get that one. It's just a bunch of guys flying around, and our guys replicated that on Saturday. Before we talk defense, obviously the highlight of the day, Jagan Cleary becoming the school's all-time leader in passing touchdowns, five of them on the day, connecting with Chris Edamwande, the first drive of the game, 53 yards. Those two have been lights out all year long. Yeah, I mean, they're truly a testament, too, because it's not like they both came in as you know, starters as freshmen, you know, where you can see that a lot of other times. Uh, Jagan really worked into it to understand the offense coming here from high school. We knew he was talented, and, and what he's done in his career is nothing short of, you know, amazing. It's the standard for everybody that comes here in the future. Um, Chris, I mean, there's a guy who had more blocked kicks than he did receptions his freshman year. He had zero catches his freshman year, 12 his sophomore year, and then all of a sudden it kind of started to click for him, and he's absolutely the best wide receiver in our conference right now. Jagan's the best quarterback, and as a, as a head coach, that's a good problem to have. Let's go back to defense. Three interceptions, obviously, last Saturday. But one thing that really sticks out is your rush defense. Take out that game against North Central. You guys, opponents just averaging 71 yards on the ground. What have you seen from your defense coming to the rush? Well, I think that that game against North Central really showed us that uh, – we had a lot of work to still do. I think we thought maybe we'd already kind of arrived and had gotten there. Uh, the last couple of years, we'd had that advantage going against Joey Valdivia in practice every single game or every single week, and that gave you a different vibe. And, and this year, because of our offense kind of shifting a little bit more to the passing attack, we've had to kind of shift our pre- preparation in our program or on our side of the ball on defense. And so what we've done is, you know, spent more time on situational defense and situational run game. And I think that's really helped our guys. Um, and I, I think that on Saturday they were just ready. I mean, there there was no doubt that our guys had spent had a great week of practice, probably our best week of practice all year. Um, and maybe it was the click of going into South Division play. Maybe it was losing the, you know, the one-point game to McAllister. All those things can probably serve as motivation. But the bottom line is they came out and they played with a different intensity of getting to the football than they had the previous couple of weeks. Let's move ahead this week, obviously. Homecoming week, always an exciting week. Let's first look at the opponent, Cornell College, just 2-3 and three on the season. What can you tell us about them? Well, you say just 2-3, and three, but we're 3-2, three and two, and it's a couple one-point games. So um, they're, uh, they're a talented team. They run the football very well. They've got a couple of different things that they do that are different than anything we've seen this year. Um, they, they run their quarterback, who's a, a talented transfer that they got. He's the, one of their coach's sons. And, uh, you know, he does some things differently than any of the quarterbacks we've seen this year. Uh, he's quicker to get the ball out. He doesn't take a drop when he's in the shotgun. It just gets the ball out off a rocker step. And I think for some of our defensive backs, that's going to be a really quick reaction for them. Um, on the offensive side of the ball for us, you know, we've got to establish the run against them. We've done that the last couple of years, and if we if we don't do that early um, and become one-dimensional, that's probably not a good thing for us. I, I think for us, you know, we really want to have a little bit more run game involved um, to get a little bit more balance. I don't believe we have to be 50-50, but I think we have to get a little bit more concentrated effort there, and I know that's the goal of our coaching staff on that side of the ball too. Like you said, you were here for that last shutout. Your 13th season now at the college, your 10th as a head coach. You said earlier in the year you don't have many superstitions, one of those being you don't step in the end zone on game days. The most interesting one is that red suit jacket every homecoming day on Saturday. Where did this start from? You know, I had a basketball coach in high school who had an orange jacket. That was our color. And there was just something about it that when he wore that, you knew it was a big game, you knew it was important. Um, and, and it took me a while to find a red one that would fit. But, uh, you know, once we finally did, it's kind of stuck around. And there are uh, some people out in the world that really think it's the worst jacket ever. And then there are other people who think it's the greatest thing in the world. So it's going to be, it'll be out on Saturday as long as the weather holds off. 
These games, they don't take much to get up to, obviously. Head coach here, you're 6-3 and three on homecoming days. It's got to be awesome to see all the alumni come back and support you guys. You know, it really is. That's why we do what we do. Uh, seeing the players who leave, when they want to come back after they graduate and spend time with our players or spend time with the program, to me that's the most important thing. You know, they, they enjoyed their time here, fell in love with an institution, and I've been lucky that I've had a chance to be here for 13 years. They only get four. And, and so now they get to come back and, and spend those times and be in the tailgate as somebody who's a fan after having played in front of those fans and in those tailgates for all those years as players. Now, I just think that the family vibe that they get when they come back and that they, they feel even when they walk in, whether they played for me or they played for Coach Dow or they played for somebody else, they all understand that this is still home for them whenever they get a chance. And it doesn't have to be on that homecoming Saturday. It's any Saturday they come back. It just so happens that uh, homecoming will have about 150 more of them, I think. So, right, be Coach, good. thanks so much. Good luck this Saturday. I appreciate it. Thank you. Well, a big congratulations to the women's, women's tennis team taking on the Midwest Conference title last weekend. It was their fourth in school history. This weekend, they're going to partake in Madison, Wisconsin, in the Midwest Conference Individual Tournament. Wish the best of luck for the ladies heading up to Madison, Wisconsin. Well, the women's golf team, they also partake in their conference tournament, which was last weekend in Rockford, Illinois, at Aldine Golf Club. They finished second out of five teams, one spot better than they finished last year. And Amanda Lee firing a 75 on day number two of the tournament. She was just one of four girls to break 80 on the weekend. Well, we told you you'd be bringing a special guest in for this week's episode, joined now by the athletic director, Jackie Slots. You've been an athletic director since 1992. I remember back in my freshman year, the first homecoming weekend, I'd heard all the hype but never knew it was going to live up to that much. It's homecoming weekend. It's, it's undescribable, isn't it? Yeah, it actually is. It's, I think we take a ton of pride, I think, from the students to the alumni to faculty and staff. I think there's just it's become really a community event that everybody's really proud of. Let's look at the athletic teams, 23 of them obviously, 20 of them made conference tournaments last season. It's got to feel pretty good from your standpoint. Yeah, it feels really good. I think most athletic directors are happy if they win more than they lose, and I think we had really one of those really special years, and it's fun. We're off to a good start. We already have a championship this fall, which is great, so congrats to tennis. You probably talked mm -hmm. about that already, and a lot of promise with the other fall teams, and winter is off and rolling, so a lot of good stuff. So they get it done on the field, the court, on the ice, and whatnot. Yeah. Well, let's head to the classroom. 154 all-conference academic recipients last year. That's also got to feel pretty good as an athletic yeah, director. Yeah, our coaches are fantastic. I think the messaging is right. Our students are working hard and to be successful in both. And I think um, it's just it's really good. There's a lot to be proud of. So this is going to be your 26th homecoming as athletic yes. director. Yes. There's got to be at least one, well, more memories. But tell me one memory which sticks out to you the most. Oh, there's so many. <laughs> actually, you know what's funny? One that sticks out a lot is actually the one that's sitting in this room. Um, we, When we first got Hallis Hall after the Chicago Bears left, we um, surprised Coach Dow when we named this room okay. in his honor. And I will never forget, it was a torrential downpour. And to get him to come in after the game was quite a challenge. And the whole room was packed with people. And I think that was that was just a pretty special homecoming because he, he obviously cried and the emotion of that. And he's when you think about tradition, I mean, he's – it's been here a long time. Um, we're going to be naming the parade this year at homecoming after his his wife, and who's you know really been an incredible icon for the college um, as well, Paula Dow. So I think that was that was probably pretty high on the list. But there's many many good ones. I, it's always one of my favorite weekends of the year. Before we let you go, obviously talk about the naming of the parade. Talk about a little, a couple more of the events that are going to be going on this weekend. Sure. Yeah, a couple staples of homecoming that I think have become, become well, obviously this weekend we have the opening of the, the, the Johnson, or the Lillard Science Center, which is fantastic. And I think um, that's just a conversion that tons of people are proud of. There's going to be a big crowd there Friday night. Um, and then Saturday, really, our athletic day kind of rolls. We have uh, at 10 a.m. is the athletic uh, recognition ceremony where we'll honor four Hall of Fame inductees and our Impact Award winner. Um, and that will be a really, it's always a really nice event and hearing from them and how, how much it meant to them to be here. Then the parade, then the fan fest, then the football game, um, soccer games on Saturday. So there will be a lot, lot happening. And then Sunday, we even uh, follow the weekend up with our golf, uh, Tripto Memorial Golf Outing on Sunday, so that will sort of cap a heck of a weekend. Yeah, a heck of a weekend it should so. be. We look forward to it. Thanks so much for coming yeah, on today. You. Did someone say red out? Because last Friday night at the gym at Lake Forest College, there was a red out right here when the Foresters hosted Grinnell College. We take you inside the gym for this one in front of a packed crowd. 
After 15 ties and seven lead changes would take you to the later half of set number one, all tied up at 24. It'd be, it would be an ace from Olivia Rhodes, followed up by this monstrous kill by Grace Larson, which gave the Foresters set number one, 26-24. In set two, the Foresters grabbed a 19-14 lead on a kill by Larson, but the Pioneers won 10 of the next 13 points, and holy comeback it would be. Down 24-23, Lake Forest would not be denied in front of the Sea of Red. Three straight kills from the home team, two of which were from Isabel Donnelly, give the Foresters a dramatic victory in set number two, once again, 26-24. On the verge of elimination, Grinnell was able to go on a 5-1 run after being down 21-20 to keep the match alive. But in set number four, Lake Forest would be the ones going on the run this time. After being tied at four, the Foresters went on a 9-1 sprint. Their lead, 23-17, decreased to five from a service error, but kills from Olivia Treves and Hannah Hornacek gave the Foresters the match, improving their record to 9-11, 2-0 in conference play. Well, the following day, the Foresters were bounced at home once again by Cornell, a score of 3-0. They're going to head north this weekend, taking on Lawrence College and St. Norbert's College. Well, the men's soccer team, they were at St. Norbert's last Saturday in Green Bay, Wisconsin, and it was a dramatic fall in double overtime where they were scored on with just 17 seconds left, falling 2-1. Lucas guide the lone goal scorer for the Foresters. He now has 10 goals in just as many games. The women's soccer team, they were on the road as well last Saturday in Kenosha, Wisconsin, taking on Carthage. They fell 5-0. Both teams will be here for homecoming weekend, taking on Monmouth on Saturday and then Knox on Sunday. Well, that'll do it for this week's episode of Lake Forest College Sports Zone. We'll love to see a bunch of you this weekend here at the college supporting the athletic teams. And if you can't make it out, you can always watch on GoForesters.com. For myself, Cam McGuire, as always, go Foresters.